Welcome to our, 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 our topic today, Beidou Satellite Navigation System in Our Daily Life. So I'm Dr. Lita Su. First of all, can you all hear me clearly? Anyone? So can anyone type anything on the chat box so that I know I'm not talking to a bunch of robots? All right, cool. I can see a lot of you replying yes, and you see me and hear me clearly. All right, cool. So today we're going to talk about Beidou Satellite Navigation System in Our Daily Life, um, Lita. And I'm actually a, a in, living indoor young scholar in aerospace navigations. I come from the Department of Aeronautical and Aviation Engineering, of course, from Poly U. So first of all, let you know me a little bit so you are more engaging to, to my lecture later. So I'm a Taiwanese, I'm born in Tainan. You can see this very cute kid over here is myself. I, I born in the fish farmer family. I got my education in, in Taiwan's high school. I got university in Taiwan's high, uh, Taiwan University, National Chengkong University. I even got my PhD in Taiwan. And after that, I go to UK. I go to UK's uh, University College of London. And this is all my colleagues there. And I also work there for a little bit. Then I become visiting researchers in Tokyo Marine University in Japan. I become a postdoc researcher in Tokyo University, Japan. You can see all my Japanese colleagues, they are not smiling as much comparing to the UK one. But I think life in Japan is very good. I don't know why they are not, they are not laughing. And then I become an assistant professor. Shifa. Okay, so I go, I hit my hands up. Okay, you, okay, cool. So I, we got beautiful assistant here to remind me I have to hands up. So like, uh, okay, so I'm assistant professor in AAE. And now I'm become associate professor in AAE, which is uh, aviation engineering in Poly U. That's myself, just call me Lita. And after this lecture, if you have any questions, please just shoot me an email. You, you Google my name, you can find me. All right, first of all, I have a question for everyone. Imagine you are visiting a foreign cities. You try to find your hotel. What will you do? Anyone? You are in foreign city, for example, you go to Japan, so you don't know the language, you go to Korea, you don't know the language. What do you do? GPS. Use a map. Duncan say use a map. To be more specifically, I guess many of us, yes, yes. Lin said that we have to hands out the Google, Google map and trying to, to use our phone, right? So this is what we do every day. And this is navigation. So to be more specific, what is navigation? Imagine if you're going from this location of Hong Kong, I don't know where, to this location of Hong Kong, I don't know where as well, but we call it A and B. How are we going to get there? They got three steps. The first step, where am I? This is the hardest part for navigation. Where am I? Am I exactly at A locations or am, I'm, in, I'm in Xinguan or I'm in Yunlong or I'm in Hong Kong Island? Where am I? The second question is, where is B relative to my positions? How do I go to B and how do I find the directions to B? That's about navigation, right? So if you want to achieve, we want to do this, we need to develop a technology, a wonderful technology to solve the problem. What should we do? Imagine if you are standing at this point, can you see B? Cannot, they got so many islands, they got so many mountains and buildings, you cannot see B, right? If I want to determine where is A and B, I got standing really far away, right? I cannot go very close to A, I need to go really far away to see where is A and where is B. So we need to have some technology that really, really far away. They can do the job and that's satellite. So this is Hong Kong and this is somewhere Hong Kong is inside the earth. If we got all these amazing satellites, this, this small robot with two wings here, this satellite looking at us from outside of the universe, from the space to see us, they may guide us to where we want to go. Because we want to go A to B that's very far, we need someone standing near the far to look at us. And that is called satellite navigation systems. All right. So in fact, a long time ago, we call GPS. I guess sometimes still didn't hear people using GPS, global position assistant, GPS, GPS here, there, everywhere. But GPS is the first generation of GNSS. It actually means global position assistant. Global means across the world. No matter where you are in this world, you can use in this GPS to determine where you are. So this is how amazing it is. Okay. Wherever you are, we can use in this satellite, uh, the, this satellite system is called GPS system to determine where you are. And now more and more you're starting to hear different words like global navigation satellite systems. So what's the difference between the two? Anyone know? What is GPS? What is GNSS? If you know, like I, I think I can quit my lectures, you, 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 you just, <laughs> I don't have to teach, right? All right, no one, no one, I'm check, looking at the check bus, no one, no one. All right, the answer is here. GPS means satellite navigation system from USA. 
So American developed GPS, and that's the first phase. And Russia, at the same time, they're also doing their own satellite navigation system. It's called GLONASS. So see the flag over here? So this is the two pioneers to develop the, the space exploration, right? So and they developed the satellite in the first stage, GPS and GLONASS. And because GPS is the first one to open up the everyone can the public use. So we're using GPS since our 90s and 20s, 90s and, and 2000s. So we're starting to use our smartphone to navigate ourselves because American open up the services. And then European unions, EU, they start a program called Galileo, which is a very famous scientist in Europe. And called Galileo system is another satellite system. Then Chinese government also starting uh, Beidou. If you know Chinese, it actually means um, the star, they're pointing the star to navigate ourselves on the earth. So we have our Beidou. And Japan is have its own system as well. It's called QZSS, but it's more or less original only in Japan, Asia Pacific area you can have. Even Indian are having their systems. So every government is trying to have their global navigation satellite system so that they can navigate themselves wherever we are in the earth. All right. So that's that's what GPS difference with GPS. GPS, GNSS is a broader term, including all the satellite navigation system in the world. American one, Russian one, Galileo one, uh, Chinese one, Russian, uh, so, uh, Japanese one, and Indian one. All right. Then let me ask uh, another question. Like we all know we have our Google map, we have our smartphone in our pocket that's using the latest version of iPhone 13. I know you're jealous. Maybe some of you already have and some of you don't. But let's say, what kind of GNSS use in your smartphone? Anyone? What kind? Okay, let's say, what kind of GNSS use in this iPhone 13? A lot of people are, are saying like, okay, so we are, we are using our Chinese Beidou or we are using our Galileo or we are using GPS. Anyone have a guess? We're using American systems, European systems, or, 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 or Chinese systems? No, no. Hybrid. Oh, Morgan, thank you very much for, for replying my questions. Oh, yes, exactly. I got a bunch of very smart kids over here. If you go into tech look, take a look of the technical spec of iPhone 13, this is what you got. You have GPS, Galileo, QSS, Beidou, everything. We're using everything. <laughs> Sorry, Ross. <laughs> right. So inside the smartphone, in fact, this is a very, very tiny, small chips inside the phones to provide you to do position. This is a broken one. All right. So what is the magic within these very small chips that they can estimate where we are in the world? This is what I'm going to answer you in, in a second. Let's back to this slide a little bit. So this is called GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System. It means assistance. I'm not sure how many of you understand the system. System means big. System means a lot of components. So this is a system, not just one satellite. Okay, this is a system. So what does system look like? First of all, of course, in the space, we're going to have the satellite, a very cute satellite here. But only the satellite itself is not enough. It's not enough. We go into half a ground station. We have a ground station, which is on the surface of the Earth. You have the monitor stations, a master control station, a lot of scientists going there, doing their coding to monitor where the satellite is, where the clock, the clock of satellites. They're doing all this. And then this ground antenna, very, very big dish, sending a signal back to the satellite again, so that the satellite know where it is. Then the satellite sent in the signals to us, to our smartphone, to your car, even to our aircraft. So the whole three part, space part, ground control part, and user part is called GP, GNSS system. It's a system. If you only have the satellite, not enough. Satellite need to maintain by a bunch of scientists, engineers sitting on the ground to help, to help the satellite to survive. All right, and then the satellites do the job, transmitting the data to us, and we're trying to estimate where we are. But how? Oh, by the way, so before I go into how, that this is in the ground station. So if you want to transmit a signal to space, which is 20,000 kilometers away, very, very far, then this is the satellite we use. You have to point into the satellite very accurately, then transmit a wave to the space. All right, so this usually in the equator, somewhere in Hawaii have one, somewhere in US have one. They have all over the world, they have this one, all right? But how do we actually determine our, our, our position? In navigation, the hardest part is position, all right? In this satellite positioning, one thing, if this is satellite, this is me. What satellite is doing is to transmit this A, B, C, D to me. What is A, D, A, B, C, D to me? I give you an analogy. A is rice, B is pork, C is a green veg, 
D is soy sauce. Then with this component, ABCD, rice, pork, soy sauce, veg component together, and with the hands of shave, which is F, it become your barbecue rice. So this is exactly the same thing over here. So the satellite providing us the pork, providing us the rice, providing us the veg, providing us the soy sauce, and our chip, this chip is being the shave to making all these ingredients, all these components to determine where the satellite is, where the satellite is, where the satellite is, comparing to the center of the earth. This is center of the earth. So if I got these three assets, I can know this position X, Y, and Z. All right, so satellite just transmitting A, B, C, D, and this chip over here is trying to determine where the satellite is comparing to the center of the Earth. The distance, how far is myself to the satellite? What can I do? I think the easiest part is like, okay, I got the clock, satellite so have a clock, they have a transmitting time. For example, this is one second and I have a receiving time. This is, this is one second, this is two seconds. And based on the time differences, two minus one equals to, I saw that I have a bunch of very smart students, equals to one. So I have a one second propagation time. And one second propagation time multiplied by a speed of light, Speed of light is 10, 3 to the order of minus 8. Then our distance is about 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, 0, 0, 8, 0 meters. This is how we do the ranging. Okay, this is how we do the ranging because we know how fast the light is, is transmitting. And we have the two clock, so we have the range. All right, this is another thing this magical chip doing here. Then what do we have? Based on what I just say, I have where the satellite is. I know where the satellite is comparing to the center of Earth. I know where it is. What is the second thing we have? I know the range. I know this is me. I'm probably here, so I have the range. So where am I comparing to this satellite? Very, very easy, isn't it? I'm in the circle. I'm anywhere in the circle. But I'm not only listen to one satellite. I listen to two satellites, three satellites. And in this satellite number two, I supposed to be in this circle. You tell me I supposed to in this circle. In this satellite number three, I supposed to in this circle. So where am I? I supposed to be this intersect area, this big cross over here, right? This is where I am. And this is what your chip is doing. This is what your smartphone doing, all this simple math and to give you the position. All right, to this stage, you know how you do how you do navigations, how you know where you are comparing to the center of the Earth using the satellite. What's the next step? So I guess a lot of our audience has heard about these two terms, latitude and longitude. If we said like, okay, I want to go to Big Ben Tower, which is a wonderful tower in London, then you using your Google Earth, you probably will see this latitude and longitude over here. It gives you two degrees here, right? Some of the old school students, some of the old school engineers enjoy using this latitude and longitude in their Google Maps or they can also find where we are. But what it actually means, it means your position, it means your coordinate. When we're discussing with each other on your position, are we usually using this? No. I said like, okay, so if this is the MTR station, if you want to visit to this big band tower, then it's like, uh, okay, 40, 45 meters in the east, and uh, this is 32 meter in the south, and you have to go up 70 meter. This is a human being language. You don't use latitude, longitude, and altitude. But what is that? Because when you're talking about GPS, GNSS, you're always looking at this latitude and longitude. What does it actually mean? This looks very difficult, isn't it? Like a figure with lots of a very difficult symbol, but this is actually very easy. Consider this is the center of the earth, okay? Latitude, longitude actually meaning like, okay, if this is center of the earth, I got longitude 50 degree, it means like, okay, starting from this zero degree, then I go 50 degree to this direction, 50 degree to this direction. This is what longitude means, okay? Then where is zero degree? If you visit London, you go to Greenwich, they got Greenwich station, uh, they got wonderful beer and food over there. But what most importantly, if you go there, you will see this, this stop. It means this is where is zero degrees of longitude in the earth. 
All right, so if you get this zero degree, then I know like I have 50 degree from zero degree to 50 degree, and I have 40 degree in, in latitude. Here you got 40 degree in latitudes, then you know your locations are here. So based on, on longitude and latitude, I know I'm in, in the location on the surface of the Earth. All right, this is what longitude and latitude means. Right, so I know GPS, you already tell me, okay, so I'm in this location and that's the, according to what longitude and latitude, what's the next step? I need to have a map. I need to have a map with longitude and latitude, right? So if you go back to, to the big sphere circle that you have, the globe, the globe you have in your house, or you're going to have a flatter one, the 2D ones, you have your longitude, at the, at the horizontal axis, your longitude of horizontal axis, you got latitude of horizontal axis. If I got GPS tell me I'm in these locations and corresponding to these longitude and latitude, I know where I am in this surface of the earth. I know where I am in this world. And then after you do this, I finally know where I am. This is what the satellite navigation helping us to do. We need to have a map and we need to have the satellite to tell us where the satellite is, where the range and where I am. And what's the next step? So before I go into the next very interesting slide, can we invite one question, two questions to ensure I still have an audience here on the, quest, on, on the positioning one. I'm going to wait two for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so no questions, so then save your questions to the end of the session, so I will answer over there. Now, to this stage, I have a map, and I know where I am in the map. What can we do now? Okay, so I, I, I borrow these figures from uh, this wonderful uh, business, uh, business studies. They said like, okay, GNSS applications now is the most popular for so-called location-based service, and it's, it's abbreviated LBS. Sounds like a very high tech word, but it means what? I give you a service based on your location, based on your location. And you have your smartphone, so you have a lot of, you have, a lot, you have your locations and you have the, the shop's locations. What can we do? They got tons of different applications. Uh, application means app. They got tons of different app in your hands. And they require the GNSS position. First of all, everyone use Google map. I'm not sure how many of you never using Google map. You could be an alien in this earth. Please adapt how to use Google Earth to navigate yourself in the city. So you have Google, Google Maps. Some, some of you are Apple fans, so you have an Apple. I don't know what's the Apple's map, but they have an Apple map. And if you go to a different part of the world, they have a different map. But usually, we're using Google Map, right? And in fact, if you check your weather, the also based on your location, if you're using like my observatory, which is a Hong Kong, Hong Kong observatory app, then you know like it's Kulong, what's the, what's the temperatures at the, at the new territory, what's the temperatures also require your locations. What's the next? Using open rice, if you travel to Chin Sa Chui, you want to open up your open rice to see whether this is a good ramen shop or this is a good bubble tea shop, you need to use this one to check where you are to find the surroundings the surrounding shop, isn't it? Or using chip advisor to say this is a good hotel, this is a bad hotel. You also require your GPS locations. What's more, like every day we are being super lazy now. We are like the, eating the food only on our back. It means what? We're using Uber Eat, we're using Deliverlo, Panda, Go, or Panda Food, Delivery, I don't know. We have this one, this kind of app. They need to know where you are and you are allowed to check where is your food, isn't it? require locations or you just call your uber you are in certain locations you want uber to come to pick you up require your locations you credit your location of the taxi isn't it or you are a fan of pokemon you want to go to somewhere else to pick up the very special uh very special pokemon I, I, i'm not sure like they got different type of pikachus i only know pikachus if you want to pick up pikachus you, you may need to go to a very special place when your smartphone go to that special place then you can pick up right so this is another gaming. And for dating app, I don't recommend, so you, I don't talk, but it's also used. And also there is a Nike running, running club, isn't it? So right, Nike running club means like you want to do exercise, you want to do jogging with the other cities in the world. You also require this GPS to check where you are so you know how much you run. So you feel the satisfaction, mm, I'm running 10 kilometers today. This all require GNSS, satellite navigation to give you position to enable your smartphone. 
All right, other than this one, if you, you, you travel to mainland China, they have a bunch of a similar app. They can provide us exactly the same purpose. So they got DD, they got Meituan, they got my phone world. I just saw, I know because I traveled a, a few times, so I also use make use of this app. But they also require these services. So Beidou also help us to do this all these services as well. All right, but in fact, there is much more. This is uh, I just talking about smartphone, which is our everyday life. You put you put you use your hands to the smartphone. You can already enjoy the benefit of GNSS, the satellite navigation. But it is much more. If you look at this one, I I doubt how many of you don't know Tesla. <laughs> like Tesla is combining an intelligent vehicle, which is you can call it a robot, a Guang robot with wheel, with AI, artificial intelligence to know it's a road and pedestrian, then with GNSS to provide very precise positioning, then it can do so-called autonomous driving. So I, 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 get, I bet many of you already see this video before, but I still quickly show this one to you. Okay, what you do is very simple. When, when you got this one, you just quickly navigate to the park and select locations. Then you can navigate using autopilot. The car, after you click like your smartphone, then the put down, after you do put down price, the car is going to drive itself. Okay, I know you see that the hand still on the wheel somehow, but this is only for regulation to make sure still someone is driving because current regulation, we don't allow the car running itself. You can see at this highway, the car running itself, how the car knows where it is comparing to the center of the map, how the car knows I'm here, because I have a map, I have satellite navigation, I have GNSS. So that I know I'm here, so that later I, the car know I have to keep running forward to make the right turns. This is all because GNSS. If no GNSS, no autonomous driving. So you don't have Tesla autonomous driving to help you to drive then when you want to take a rest. All right, this is already happening in your futures, uh, especially for this youngster there, for your futures, you will see this is coming for sure. It also helped help on av aviations. So now you have all these satellites to determine where the aircraft is, the aircraft talking to each other, then we, we know where it is, so there's less accidents, and we're going to make use of more on the space. This is so-called the next generation. So I'm going to play you another video, so and this how does how to, how the navigation satellite system helping our our aviation system okay so this one is a bit loud be careful next gen is working next gen modernization is marching across the country the faa has completed a nationwide modernization of the foundation of the air traffic system this new system has the technological horsepower to handle the changes and the increase in the traffic in the national airspace system We've installed a nationwide infrastructure of the and new surveillance the system that will enable satellite-based air traffic control. We've redesigned the airspace over major metropolitan areas and now have more satellite-based procedures in our skies than radar-based procedures. Cities, airlines, and passengers are the recipients of millions of dollars saved in fuel, decreased carbon emissions, and more on-time arrivals and departures. This is important. Satellite play in the get, satellite navigation plays role in the background by saving millions of dollars and reduce a lot of carbon emissions and make sure your fly arrive on time. All right, so satellite is helping. Satellite is helping even in aviations. What's the next one? So if you you go hiking somewhere, you just lost you just lost yourself in in the mountains. Then some of the search and rescue is going to find you. Currently, how do they do? They send a drone. A drone means the aircraft flying itself. It's called flying robot, okay? With the AI, with the camera to detect where is the victims, and with the GPS, it's going to check where you are automatically. It is also helping on search and rescue. Let me show you a, a second video on this one. Ah, one second. So I have this videos. There you go. So you see how people are doing is like, okay, after, let me see. They're trying to search the space. They're only using their iPad to do the search and rescues. So they're going to control the aircraft using iPad and making this area that you lost as an, as an area to search. As simple as that. Then the aircraft starting to fly. The GPS is providing its locations comparing to the map. Then the aircraft flying to this area automatically searching and using the camera to see whether you are there. And GPS play a very important part to know where the, the drone is, if we know where the, the, the drone is, 
we know where is the victims. So it help us to identify where is the victims and search and rescue become much faster. It also help yourself when you're losing in, in, in hikings, we find you a bit faster. That is also what GNSS is trying to help. Very, very important. What else can you do? Obviously, you can do land surveying. When you're trying to make a map, you see someone standing on the roadside using something like a tripod over here, putting some antenna over here, looking like super professional, like a geek, like a nerd over here. They are trying to measure the exact locations on the map so that to make sure that uh, like your property is still in the right place. You see, like if you, you think about you buying a land, I know it's difficult in Hong Kong. I know it's very difficult to buy a land in Hong Kong. But if you're buying a land of Hong Kong, you say like, I want to buy these areas. Then how do I know that, uh, okay, I go to exact place. Is this area corresponding to here? How can we do? We ask the surveying engineers to go there to make sure that your location is so accurate to what level, to what meter, millimeter level. If you don't know what is millimeter, it means 0 0.1 centimeter level. If you don't know what it is, it means like this, super small, very, very accurate locations on the map. All right, so this is also helping us to reduce a lot of uh, argument on this is, you are going too far, you're going too near in length of weight. Very, very important application as well. What can be even more if we want to do talk about scientific research is that the satellite actually trying to measure the surface of the sea. Because now every day we're talking about climate change, the carbon emissions is carbon dioxide emission is crazy. We all talking about our sea level is increasing, but we need to have a, we need to have a truth. We need to have a data to show to this politician to say like the sea is really rising. How do we get the data? People using GPS to, to do that. When you have a satellite and the signal transmitting and you're going to reflect to another small satellite in the low orbit. And this satellite is going to measure this distance. It have the distance. So it know the exact height of the sea. Then it can model the height of the sea very, very easily by just programming, just a bunch of nerds sitting behind the table do, 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 doing a lot of math and physics and coding. They can estimate the sea, make use of the satellite. Right? So this is also a very, very important use of a, 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 a GNSS. So GNSS is with us every day. What else can GNSS do? Anyone, I already talked to this point, can anyone think of what can GNSS do even more? Anyone? Am I talking to a bunch of uh, robots and they won't talk? Anyone know what else can GNSS do? Just guess. Spy. <laughs> That's, that require a different satellite, but uh, spy could, could happen. Nothing, spy can happen. What else? Anyone? Hey, in fact, when you go shopping, space exploration, that's also very good. Just mean you are becoming, you, you are becoming an, an, an scientist. Missile, okay, can, so you're going to become a military one. So yes, of course, military use. You guys are super correct. Walls, coal mining, all correct. Do science and they are all correct. Cooking? Okay, Joseph, you might even need to show me how to do this. Follow an old man. And I need you to improve your English, Matthew. That's O and N and men. All your mining, that all that all happening, but they are not the answer I'm looking for. Have you guys seen GNSS watch? Oh please, yes, that's that's very much possible. So have you guys seen GNSS watch? Okay, like this particular model, like Garmin, they say, okay, I'm using solar power GNSS watch and making my watch super accurate. Is that true? It is so true. In fact, GNSS not only give you positions, <laughs> Duncan, it's true. It's so true that GNSS not only give you position, but also give you timing. Very, very important. How GNSS give you timing? Do you remember previously I said that, how do we measure the, the range? So you got the, this range, but you have a two clock, right? You have a two clock. Let's say, Today we have two audience. Are you sure you're using the same watch? The same watch is giving you the same time. Like we have a different time standard for everyone. Sometimes your watch is 631 and the other watch is 632. Okay, don't talk about minute, just one second. Do you know one second differences between this time and this time? If you are, you, you are not using the same watch, using two different watch, and their difference is about one second, what happens? This distance of range is 3 multiplied to the 10 to the order of 8. 
meters, even one second differences. So it means like if we don't try to correct our receiver time and make sure it's the same with the satellite time, then it's impossible to do position. It's impossible. So our GNSS uh, scientists, engineer, what we do is we estimate your your receiver, receiver clock arrows, your your, your self watch arrows, and correct it using the satellite measurements. This is a bit difficult for you at this moment, but remember, this one is using satellite measurements to help you to correct your time. Make sure your time is as accurate as the atomic clock in the satellite. Okay, so make sure after you buy this GPS watch, your watch is in the level of atomic clock, atomic clock, super, super accurate clock. Some, some very geeky clock, very nerdy clock, but it means very, very accurate clock. If you buy this one, you get your time super accurate. How accurate? Accurate to the 10 to the order of minus or minus seven or six. So it means 0 0.0000001 000 seconds of accuracy. Super, super accurate. That's why people are selling this, right? So I don't talk about the detail, but it means this is a bit too difficult for you guys now. But after you have the timing, you actually use in a lot of different applications. Like, in fact, when we're making the phone calls, you, you, you're using a lot of ground, a lot of a base station for your, smart, your smartphone. You see a lot of small antenna outside of your building. It means the, the base station for your smartphone. And these stations need to synchronize. Synchronize is a very difficult term. It means we need to make sure our time are the same. So when they're trying to do this, they need to make sure their time are the same. They are using GPS to provide it. All right. And in the transactions, if you're using credit card, the transaction, the timestamp is also super important. They're using GNS to give you a timestamp. And also smartwatches, they also use in GNSS to give you a time. And this is a very unique contribution of GNSS. Only GNSS can give you an atomic clock, an atomic clock level using this kind of very cheap watch. It could be even one US dollar level watch. You can get atomic clock. This is very unique for GNSS. So not only positioning, it also give you timing, timing, give you the time. Very, very important. So uh, back to our topic, because how we, do, we meant to talk about Beidou. So let's talk about Beidou. So Beidou is a, a, and Galileo are both new members for GNSS, but Beidou and Galileo are also very, very mature at this moment. But Beidou, so it actually started in 1994. This is a bit of history, but I want to tell you like how much Chinese government putting effort to put a satellite in this space to help us our, our daily life getting better. So in 1994, they have the first 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 generation of Beidou. So it gives a two G GEO. GEO means geosynchronous equal orbit satellite. It means what? The satellite your Earth is moving, the satellite is moving. He always like a star at the top of our heads, always at the exact same position. This is called geo satellite. All right. So the first phase of Beidou, they have four satellites in totals, and they take in like a, you see. They're taking almost 20 years to transmit like a, to almost, oh, sorry, not almost 20 years. It's taking like almost 13 years to launch the four satellites. Means a lot of research, a lot of science has been conducted during the 13 years. So that the Chinese government starting uh, have the capability to, to, to navigate ourselves in the world. This is for the first phase. For the second phase, uh, it's called Beidou 2 from 2004 to 2012. So they have a, a bunch of uh, 14 satellites here, five geo satellites. Uh, uh, and a different orbit satellites called IGSO and MEO and ME, MEO, similar to GNSS. They got different orbit satellites around us for 14 one. If you, you don't know what it means, it actually means like this. So if this is Hong Kong, like a G, GEO means like the satellite is always here, it's not moving anywhere, no matter our Earth is turning around, it's not moving. But this special pattern of the satellite is called IS, IGSO. They always like this. In other words, the satellite is always about in, in a Chinese and, and Hong Kong's Hong Kong's hand. Okay, always here, always here. And for this MEO, it's travel around the world. It's travel around the world. All right. So using three different orbits to improve the navigation performance. And now we are in the third phase of the Beidou. So we got thirty satellites. So at this moment, we have a three geo satellite three IGSO and 24 MEO satellite. In the other world, we got 30 at this moment, 2022. We are 2020, we should be all very proud. 
and the Chinese government is, is aiming to provide a more ubiquitous, a better positioning service, better PNT service to 2033, 35. It means what? Later, then you'll have a better service on your satellite navigations. We all should be celebrated about. Okay, so this is the advantage. You have a three different kind of orbit, better coverage, availability, readabilities, it's better to resist some interference. And so you also have the search and rescue, communication, argumentation advantages. Right, uh, I still got like 30 minutes uh, of our, our talk. So I can, is, we can also share like what's our challenges in Hong Kong. This is our beautiful Hong Kong. We all love this, the city, this area, so isn't it? Like, in these cities, I'm not sure that you have handing out your smartphone, trying to, to get an Uber, you find it difficult, right? So if this is your smartphone, this is what usually happens. I'm not sure how many of you experienced this yourself. Like this is actually where you are, but your smartphone tell you here. Then your Uber driver comes all the way to this point, trying to pick you up but you are standing at here, then you start making phone calls to like, hey, I'm not here, I'm in front of this building here, you're going to the wrong place. So we have this every day in Hong Kong, very unique. We have this every day. Why? Right? So we all feel very difficult. Where exactly I am, even I got a GPS, sometimes still don't know where I am. Why it is not very accurate? Why we have a problem for this? Right? So this is a unique problem in Hong Kong. First of all, we know that we got different satellites. We got different satellites. We got different satellites. One satellite means one circles. And, uh, and, and we have five satellites, so we got five circles. And this five circle with an intercept area. This is, should be where I am, which is the exact, the right location, isn't it? But this is under the assumption everything is perfect. Perfect means what? We don't have buildings. In Hong Kong, we got a lot of buildings, not just buildings, we've got a lot of tall buildings. Not just tall buildings, we got a lot of expensive buildings. We got a lot of expensive buildings. They were blocking all our satellites. Okay, the satellite soon signal trying to chase me. Bam, buildings just block it. The signal is not so strong, cannot penetrate the satellite, the, the, the buildings. Then what happened? And not only it is not cannot pe pe uh, penetrate, it also have signal will reflect. The signal will not just coming from a direct one, but it will reflect. This is introducing another problem. That problem means, okay, I don't have this satellite and some of our distance become bigger. Then your location is like within this area. If you calculate the center of this one, you become like in the wrong location. That's what happened to us every single day. And that's why when you're calling a taxi, when you're calling an Uber, you have problem. Okay, with a large positioning error. What can we do with it? Okay, sorry, like this is like, a, we have a data, so-called uh, your smartphone data. The uh, portio is over here. We usually go to these Chinsatri East areas. So if we go into standing at this point and we're using our smartphone to, to, set, to receive the satellite data, just like your smartphone doing, then we analyze. This is the location look like. How big is the error? 60 meter. How big is 60 meter? This big, if you go to that areas, is the width of the square very very big you don't know where you are in the square now in fact that's what happened this is for your smartphone if you're on the car you're trying to do autonomous driving you go to mong kok this is long Fang over here you go to mong kok this is exactly where you are but it actually the point your, your smartphone output is like this this is very not very good for your autonomous driving isn't it and that's one of the reason why in hong kong we cannot have autonomous driving our satellite navigation sucks here so what can we do? What can we do to help us to go out from these predicaments, to go out from all these challenges? That's what we university trying to help. Okay. So first of all, I, we, we, we need to make sense to Hong Kong government, land departments, uh, in land departments. So they provide a very, very good 3D building models. So now we are in the, in the area of digital twins, talking about all this meta universe, digital twin become very important. Hong Kong governments provide us the 3D beauty models. You see, this is in Qin Shui East. You can just download this data for free. Hong Kong government give this data, everything for free. Okay, now we have the 3D beauty models. How can we help our satellite navigation getting better? I tell you why, because 
when we have satellite here, this satellite being blocked because there is a building there. If I don't know there is a building, I don't know how to solve the problem. But now the government give us these building models. So we can make use of the model to help us position and become better. What do we do? This is what we develop in PolyU. Okay, this is what we university researchers, we work in our, our, our lab every day. We're trying to find our, our way out, trying to helping us to have a better life. All our students have a better life. How do we do? This is our team trying to do is like, okay, if you are located at these areas, I don't know, you might be here, you might be here, you might be here. I just guess, I guess you could be this one location, two location, th third location or fourth location. What I'm going to do the next is pretty simple. Then I have the models. I have my smartphone to tell me, okay, the signal is reflect like this. The signal is coming like this. The signal is blocked like this. I have my smartphone to record all the satellite data. Different line is different kind of satellite data. I record all these satellite data. Then in our poly UI, we have the building models. I assume that, okay, if I'm in location one, I trying to chase if the satellite is over here. I trying to see how the signal is reflected just using very simple law of the, the physics, the perfect reflections that you learn in your phone one or phone two, you learn physics. Then I know the signal can be reflect like this because I know where the satellite is. I can start to try to simulate, simulate sounds like a very difficult word. I try to calculate what the signal reflection look like. Then I have in location one, I do this. Location two, I do this. Location three, I do this. Location four, I do this. This is what I guess before, isn't it? Then I try to compare this one with my smartphone. Compare this one with my smartphone. This one with my smartphone. This one with my smartphone over here. Can anyone tell me which one look like the same? Come on, you just make a comparison, isn't it? One, exactly. So we know the candidate similarity is very high. So I know I'm very likely to be located in position one. I cannot just do this for one, two, three, four. I can do this to all the point over here. And the color here means very, very similar. Not so much similar. Then I know it is in these locations. This is our poly U, 3D MAGNSS. If when you have this in hands, when you go to TST, then this is this is actually why how you work, and your smartphone in 2019, it may give you a position like this. If even if you work it, but sometimes you say you are here, you think you are going crazy, but if you're using our portable technologies, you're actually looking like this, almost the same. So in poly you very important. We learn and we apply for the benefit for the benefit of main companies. And this, we are trying to improve your Uber experiences. Then you may ask, where can I get this amazing um, PolyU technologies? I'm telling you, most of the smartphone uh, uh, implement this technology. Some of them paying some money to us, some of them they are not paying money to us, but many of them are reading our paper, using our research outcomes to make your smartphone positioning better. This is what we do in PolyU. All right. So before I end up with the, my talk, which is five minutes uh, earlier than my talk, I want to talk with you what will be the future look like. And in aviation engineers, we are thinking about the futures. I think in the future, we might have a lot of aircraft flying above our head, isn't it? Uh, we can have uh, our Deliverlo, Uber Eat, Panda Ghost, they are all flying in the air, deliver the food, like Mei Tuan talking with us and getting the, how to, I'm using the, the, the UAV to train us, transfer us the food. GNSS definitely can help. But other than GNSS, there are a lot of different challenges that I, didn't, I cannot cover within today. I sincerely invite you for those of you, if you want to join, want, want to do this amazing work with us, please come to our uh, AAE, Department of Aeronauticals and Aviation. You just, po you just Google PolyU Aviation Engineering to learn more about our programs, which we are waiting here for you to create a future with us. And this is our department head. So he is trying to make us as a leading aeronautical and aviation engineering departments in Asia Pacific regions. And we are very confident we are going to lead directions because every day we do, we're doing math and physics and apply to your smartphone and making our life better. 
And thank you very much for your attentions. So I want to give a special thanks to my PhD student, Guo Hao Zhang. He come up with a lot of the component of the slide and he should get the credit. Thank you.